If your ink's too slow and your nib won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to see you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews. Hello, folks. Larry here, and welcome to the show. I guess it's a show. But anyway, Mr. Frank's on phone, but he's pen and paper, and he's got a lot of time. Everybody. Because, you know, when I first met Mr. Frank back in 2015, he was in the process of growing. He was in the process of understanding how the process works. He had a work, working knowledge, but, you know, just because you have that working knowledge, it's a continued learning process because you're in it. It's your business. It's your livelihood. And you've got to take care of your livelihood, you know? So I'm going to let Frank talk because I don't know what I'm talking about. He does. All right, Frank, thank you for coming, my friend. Thank you, Larry. It's great to be here again. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. You look good. Yeah, it's always good to see you. Long time now, hasn't it been? Long time. <laughs> So what do you want to talk about? I, uh, uh, how, how many tables did you start with and how many tables do you have now? When my very first pen show as a dealer was the 2015 DC show. And I started with two tables and I had about a dozen products with about two or three vendors. Uh, I'm just celebrating my seventh anniversary. I have over 50 brands. I deal with over 20 vendors. I have five tables of pen shows. I bring a lot of merchandise. I'm usually the largest presence at pen shows. I have five tables. I bring a good 40 plus brands of my 50. And uh, people are just amazed when they see me. You know, they, uh, they're like, wow, I didn't realize you had this much stuff. I didn't realize you were this big. You know, you get that a lot. And it's good, but it's like, I'm here, you know, I'm not a small dealer. Uh, I'm very happy to say we're going back to DC. It's my sixth DC show. We didn't have one, of course, in 2020. So we're back at the Falls Church Marriott again, same venues before. Things are a little different this year. Uh, the hotel is going through a, a new facade change to remodeling. The small ballroom that I was in uh, years past is closed off. It's being worked on during this construction. I'm now in the main ballroom. I'm in the back ballroom. Uh, a lot of people are looking online saying, you know, what's going on? Why are the sponsors saying you have to buy tickets in advance and all that now? And the main reason why for that is the hotel doesn't want long lines in the front because there's space is limited. It's not that you'll be turned away if you don't buy tickets in advance but you should buy tickets in advance to make uh, the process a lot easier. Uh, the hotel wants to minimize the line getting in to the back ballroom. So uh, the vendors this year are going to be in the hallway around the main ballroom, in the main ballroom, and they're going to be, I believe, on the mezzanine level on the second floor. There's going to be another level this year. So uh, not quite sure how they're setting that up. I don't know if they're making that the maker's room that people have talked about wanting and having and all that, that might be the case. Uh, I can't say I'm not running it. Uh, I'm a dealer there. I am gonna have my five tables in the main ballroom in the back. So certainly come visit us. It should be a terrific show. DC is always the biggest one. We're looking forward to it. Again, if you don't buy tickets in advance, you won't be turned away. You might just have a harder time getting around and, you know, uh, however the hotel is going to set it up or the sponsors are going to set it up, given the space that we have. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, also, uh, get up the subject from the DC show, but you do go to the mall sometimes, don't you? I do a seasonal store at my local mall. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about and planning on doing that in November and December. That's huge. That's when I saw yes. you first there. I, that was huge. I, look at this guy filling up the store. You saw the picture, right? I know. A couple of my dealers are like, this is not a pop-up shop, Frank. Don't ever call it that again. This is better than a, a lot of stores already established, you know. 
And they're like, yeah. So, you know, it's like, wow, you know, you do this, you know, yeah. And you know, you have so a variety of things. It's, it's like never ending because I I know you're supposed to look on your website, but yeah. there are so many things that I didn't even see on the website. Maybe it's me, but where's he getting all this stuff? I mean, <laughs> your store had, it was just lots, all the shelves and the hangers and this and that, and people were coming in, and I, 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 I didn't know it was that in depth. It really was. Wow. I do have to credit the, the mall management. Uh, they do have this store uh, available for me with the fixtures, and that certainly helped. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And, right and, now, it is rented long term, but I'm uh, looking to right. get there or somewhere uh, back in, in this local mall of mine. Uh, it's called Eastgate Shopping Center, Morristown Mall. It's uh, right outside of Cherry Hill, uh, about um, 10 miles uh, east of Philly. And those people in the Philly area know of it. So it's a nice local mall that, you know, people go to. And yeah, I've been pretty lucky. I've been pretty successful there. And I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, How long does it uh, take you to, at the shows, set up your booth table? At a pen show, uh, we've gotten pretty good. Uh, it used to take a lot longer. Uh, we're down to about three, four hours now, which uh, is long, but for me, it's pretty good. Striking down is a lot easier. We're usually done in the, about two and a half, three hours tops. The van's loaded in three hours. So it, it's a lot of merchandise and people, when they come, they're like, wow, I come in with 40 tubs and two, uh, two hotel cards full. And it's like, wow. You know, it's like, you know, you bring a lot of stuff. It's like, yep. Yeah, you do. I'm a one-man pen store. I am online. I count on pen shows, so I definitely count on having shows. It was pretty rough in the year 2020 when we didn't have shows. Uh, I was able to grow. I did grow online, uh, but definitely missing pen shows. Uh, we had seven. I attended seven pen shows out of 11 last year. This year. Uh, I'm going to 13 pen shows. There's 18 shows. They just added a new pen show in Orlando, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. I just got back from Miami. Uh, my, uh, my furthest away pen show driving 1200 miles from Philly to Miami. We did that. Uh, we're doing DC, which is one of my closer shows. I consider this a home show to some degree. Uh, we're going to Orlando in September next month, the first inaugural Orlando pen show. So I'm doing Florida twice in like six weeks so that'll be interesting so the first show there so out of 18 pen shows i'm doing 13 and we just had our hump show with miami my seventh one of the year and i have six more to go uh i think there is eight or nine more to go and i'm doing six of them uh i don't do dallas i don't do denver I don't do the Arkansas show and I don't do the two West Coast shows. Basically, if I can drive to a show uh, in two days, one or two days, I go to it. Right, right. One of the reasons why not everybody sees me. I go to a lot of shows. I'm going to 13 now. I'm going to 13 out of the 18. If I can drive to it in two days, I go to it. I bring a lot of merchandise and it can't really be shipped. So, and I don't want to be on the road more than two days. You, you can't, you'll go stir crazy. So I drive to it, I have a van. I load this van, me, my father and brother go to shows around the country. Uh, St. Louis is my furthest trip west. We just had that in June, that was a great show. Um, that's always well run by the Morgans. That's a nonprofit show where people do a lot of education classes uh, for handwriting and for pen use and things like that. So that's a great show. Uh, did Miami of course last month, which is my furthest show, St. Louis being my next one. Uh, and now we're going to DC. I'm going to uh, Orlando and Boston next month. Uh, October, I'm going to have New York and uh, Detroit. And in November, I have uh, Columbus. So that's my uh, six remaining shows. Now, a question. Do, yes. Have you, and you have, picked up some new... Uh, Vendors? Yes, I'm happy to announce that uh, uh, my biggest one this year so far is definitely Sailor. I have 
got the big S, Sailor products, Sailor pens, inks. Uh, on hand, I have uh, Kings of Pen. I have the Wicked Witch of the West, which is uh, the 1911 in purple with all black appointments, black trim. Uh, I have 1911 uh, regular size and slim. Uh, my pen of choice is the 1911 uh, slim. Uh, okay. I have this as my demo pen. Uh, the uh, Kings of Pen, the King of Pen, has a 21 karat nib. It's oversized, it's large. This and the regular size have a uh, 14 karat nib. And you have the Pro Gear and the Pro Gear Slim, uh, which is the well. they're flat top. The King of Pen is the 1911 oversized. Oversized, it's, okay. It's this pen, large. Yep. Okay. There's a slim, there's a regular, and there's the King of Pen. There's and three can, sizes can you in this tell one. What colors that you, you're going to have them in, or do you know? Uh, I have uh, black. Clear. I have the uh, Wicked Witch of the West, and that is the uh, colors in the 1911, which is the rounded N, uh, the traditional 1911 Sailor. The Pro Gear is this slightly smaller because it has two endpoints uh, on the on the cap and on the barrel that are squared and it's just centimeters smaller and there is the pro gear slim there's a pro gear regular and the pro gear oversize and that uh i have the 2022 soda pop which is a blue green i have the storybook which is a powder blue i have um black and clear in that as well yeah, yeah. so yeah i have the latest uh sailor pen products oh uh every rose has a thorn that's the one i was thinking about every rose has a thorn which is purple with rose gold trim that's the other one that i have just try to remember the pro gear colors and that's them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i have inks i have all the latest uh sailor inks and refills and products i have sailors famous pen cleaner uh I have the latest uh, Manio inks, including the Haha, ha, which everybody loves. It's like a really light sky blue. It's actually what's in my 1911. So I always have something for people to try. Sailor uh, latest I'm proud of, I now have the big three in uh, Asian pens. I've been carrying Pilot and Platinum. Now I have Sailor. I have uh, Galen Leather, which is also really popular. I have the big three in leather. I've been carrying Girologio. I've been carrying D. Charles, another uh, product I started with at the beginning of the year. D. Charles leather is really good. I have Galen. Uh, people really love Galen. Uh, I have a medic bag on hand. I've sold uh, a couple of them at the last show. Uh, the, the case, in my opinion, that's really the best thing for your book is this from D. Charles. This is a 10 count hard. And inside it, it's magnetic. Uh, D. Charles. Okay. E. Charles leather. Yep. This is how it comes. The pens do not fall out. They are tethered on a removable sleeve. And you can see that I have uh, some really thick. Okay. I see what they in here. Yep. Okay. They gotcha. do not fall out. Yep. <laughs> he says they fell out. Uh, a couple of those thinner ones did. But I'm really happy about that, that uh, they're well tethered. I actually can make that a little tighter, which I failed to do. This, so I can tether them down from the center and indeed prevent that from happening. You know, yep, so yeah. How many pins locked is that? 10. 10, okay. This is 10. This list for $80. It comes in uh, 10 different colors. Yeah. And then with D. Charles, it's the color of the case and then the stitching color. So this one is called Desert Black. It's okay. desert color, light uh, light clay with uh, black stitching. And for $80, magnetic closure, uh -huh. hard count, you know, tough, 
and it's really the best bang for the money in my opinion. So I have D-Trawls. Now they also come in two, three, five count in a flap uh, that also has that removable sleeve that you could tether them down. They're really good. The Galen uh, cases are, are similar, uh, really nice. The stitching is inside them, really good quality there. Of course, I have the magnetic six count and the famous 12 count from Galen that everybody loves, the magnetic closure from them. And uh, the medic bag, I have them on hand. They've been doing very well. I've been carrying them uh, for most of this year as well. I also started carrying uh, coloring, famous swatch. Oh, you have those now? Okay. I have them now, yep. I have the, this is the regular one. I have the mini version, which they call the dipper. And I have the oversized memo pad, spiral pad yeah. style too from them. I have them. Uh, that's among the latest new products. Yeah. You know, products. Let's, let's shoot over to Private Reserve Inc. You, you have those? I don't have Private Reserve, no. Okay, do you think in the future you might carry some? It's it's possible. Uh... Okay, because I've been asked that. <laughs> it's okay, I, it's okay. And I look, and they really have some nice, beautiful colors that I was impressed with. So uh, people ask me, was federal pens and paper going to carry? I, I'll ask them. So sure, that's okay. Right now. Whatever. I, I used I used to carry private reserve, but uh, when, it, when it, before it was the old old uh, ownership, I carried it. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. The, I think I think Brazil or something. I forgot. Uh, but anyway, so I think they make it in house, don't they now? It's it's part of Yaffa now. It's part of the Yaffa group. It's part of Yaffa. Yaffa acquired it. Uh, the person that was running it had passed away, and uh, yeah. the person that was running private reserve before it passed away, she had taken it over from the prior owner, and uh, now it's under the Yaffa group. And I do carry a lot of different Yaffa ink brands. I carry different lot Yaffa brands. Period. You know, I have Conklin ink from them. I have Conklin Benz. I have uh, Peniter ink from them. I have Diplomat inks from them. Uh, the Elox pen uh, is the latest one from Diplomat. It's really a great pen. Uh, it's an all metal pen with, uh, it's grooved to look like it's different sections and inside the rings are different colors. They start with orange. Now they have blue and purple. It's on my site. It's called the Elox ring. It's mm -hmm. metal. It's really, really a, a great pen. If you like the arrow, but not necessarily like the girth of the arrow, the Elox is for you. Same weight, a good tactile feel to it. Really good pen. Okay, cool. And you still carry the, uh, is it the Diplomat? Yeah, that's a, that's a good little pen. Oh yeah, yeah, the Diplomat pens, yeah. Magnum. Magnum, you can't uh, go wrong with it. It's, Magnum for $25, yeah, still a great price point, yeah. Uh, a real nice nib on it. Uh, a pen that if you lose it, well, you don't have a lot of investment in it, but then you know how well it writes. So it's a great little pen. Oh, yeah. I've and been carrying carry below 25. I think it's, uh, oh, it's one's white, red. I think it had three colors. What is it called? It starts with a P, maybe? From Diplomat? No, we're going to do something different. Uh, I forgot the name. If it comes to me, I'll mention it. Okay. Okay. I have a lot of pens. I have a whole section uh, on my site that says pens $25 or less. Uh, <laughs> worth a check if you haven't already. It's when you click on my site, fabulouspens.com, and you look at my top bar, uh, on there are back shelf specials, which are basically products that I'm closing out that uh, I may only have like one or two left of and then discontinued. It might be. Uh, uh promos that you know demos things like that so pens uh back shelf worth checking out things that i want to close out pens 25 hours or less just that pens that list for 25 hours that i have on the site or less mm -hmm. i have the latest pen product specials there i have shop refills there shop all pen refills and i have shop all ink brands too and that's what's on my top bar before you go down and see all my other products so can you just offhand name me a line of pins that you have that you take with you? 
I bring the pen shows three cases. I bring this to show off. I bring a Giralogio 24 pen count case. And I bring a leather wrap 10 count that I actually get from India. That's not a brand per se, but I have them. So I bring 44, 45 pens with me. I fill these plus whatever's in my shirt pocket. So I have at least one of every brand of pen I represent that people to try, whether it's steel or gold nib. So I have over 30 pen brands and I have one steel, one gold, if it has it. So I always have a pen for somebody to try. And you carry the Monteverdi, the Coughlin, the Pilot, the Sailor. Uh, now back to, what's his name? Uh, he hadn't come out with any more pens yet. Uh, Noodler, he still had that, the, the tail, what do you call the pen? Triple tail, yes, yeah. good pen. Great, well, that's a great yep. pen. That's pen he makes, the only one that I carry, yep. That's, that's yeah. a great pen. It's, uh, uh, people may not know it or just think I'm kidding, but I was totally impressed with that pen. It did everything that I like, and I was really shocked. The pen was like, what, 55 bucks? Yep. Yep, so great buy. Win-win. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I love the pen. Yeah, it puts that ink down real nice. You can see the colors of them, ink. It's just fun, a fun pen. Yep. And then what else you carry? Uh, I did say Sailor. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, that was the latest uh, new stuff I wanted to go over. Uh, stuff that yeah, I yeah. feature, you know, stuff that I have that's unique to me uh, for the most part. Uh, speaking of Click, let's talk about Click brands. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Renaissance pen. Uh, I have. I've had it over a year now. I've also added new Products from Click as well. I'll get into that in a minute. But this is Click. This is the Renaissance, a pen that looks like something that we know and yeah. love. Uh, celluloid from uh, Araloid from Aurora, but not. This is a resin pen from right. Click. This is the presentation you get. You get a nice acrylic pen with nibs of different choices fine, uh, medium, broad, stub, flex. You get two. Uh, international long cartridges and a converter for forty five dollars. Now, click. Let me say, click makes a really great fountain pen at an affordable price. There, it's a win win for everybody. I mean, click should be proud of what they have made. Now, I mean, I love them. I use them. I have one inked up somewhere around, probably in the desk in there. But yeah, I've never had a problem with my click pen. Never. Everybody knows that I go around, I, I deal with distributors all around the world, even people that don't have U.S. distributors. You know, that's how Robert Oster got here. You know, we talked about that. Click, I started working with Harsh uh, Gargwani, who is the maker of this. Uh, started dealing with him um, during the pandemic, actually, in 2020. They approached me by email. I usually look for that now. I, I wait for people to contact me and I'm like, send me a sample. That's what I'm like, I just don't jump into it. I'm like, send me a, a sample of your product to evaluate. I, I've had a lot of hits and misses. Some things that I like that I get, some things I don't like once I get them. Um, I won't carry things that I don't believe in in the store. So if you notice things that aren't in there, there's a reason. Uh, right. So I have to believe in it first and foremost. Uh, so. Click, I'm actually carrying more stuff. You know, you and I went over this. Uh, you yep. actually got a couple yep. things from Click. I'm carrying that aristocrat pen now. And I'm also carrying that piston uh, pen. Um, I actually just got them uh, about a month or two ago. Uh, I'm updating the site on that. Uh, the, piston pen is, the piston pen is actually pretty amazing. Uh, it has an ebonite feed. It's a piston fill. You did get one, Larry. I remember you did a... Yep. Mail yep. call about a month ago on them. Yep. You're going to do a review on them. I have yep. them on hand. Over there getting ready. Yep. There's five or six different colors. I have them. I have uh, all the colors of the Renaissance. Uh -huh. All eight of them. I have the Aristocrat clear barrel pens with the different color caps. There's about three or four of them. So I have a lot of different clicks now. Uh, uh, I'm the only dealer that has all that uh, product. 
I am still big with Tamoe River, even though it's discontinued. Oh, I am yeah, dealing. Yeah. I am dealing with three different sources. One uh, is international, and two are in the U.S. And as long as I can get keep getting the original fifty-two GSM Tamoe River, I'll keep carrying them. I have them in A7, this pocket size. I have them in A6, which is like the three by five. I have them in A5. Uh, a5 size, and I have them in the full A4 size as well. And as long as I can keep getting them, I'll keep carrying them. For now, the won't girls, those fit in the passport, traveler's passport, Midori? The travelers, uh, you have the full size and you have the passport. The Midori, I also started carrying. Yep, I started carrying Midori uh, this year. Another brand I started carrying this year, I have Midori on the site. I have the A5 Midoris in the different uh, types, all four types. Uh, their blank is actually a pane. It's actually got like a red border around it. They call it the pane, uh, blank pane. Uh, and then I have the grid dotted and aligned in the Midori paper as well. Uh, another brand that I started carrying this year. Uh, I also have Endless, Endless Paper. Uh, one of our distributors, LBA, Luxury Brands, just started carrying Endless. I've been carrying Endless for a few years now. Yeah. That is on the 68 gram uh, Tamoy River. I also have my exclusive brooch with them. I have an agreement with LBA. Luxury Brands will knows that I continue to get these directly from Endless. They're going to allow me to continue to do that. I deal with Endless directly on these. I deal with LBA now for my uh, Endless journals, uh, but I still deal with uh, Endless directly. Uh, their distributor is in India. I still get other things from them. I get nibs from them. I get can write nibs for them. For my ebonite pens, I, I do have some ebonite pens. A lot of people don't realize that, that I deal with Ranga to some degree. I get nibs from them. Okay. I They have Yovo new units. They can work with them. Uh, I have nibs. People don't stop and realize if they go to my site, they'll see that I sell nibs. I sell loose nibs from the brands I represent. I also have my own Bach nibs with Federalist Pens logo on them. I have a distributor. Uh, from overseas. Uh, they have a U.S. distributor that works uh, with a consortium that buys Bach in, uh, buys Bach nibs in bulk. And I get my logo put on them. I have Mark Backus, the nib grinder, custom grind some of them for me. I have him do these can write nibs, these nibs that Click uses, uh, that a lot of uh, uh, brands do use can write nibs. Uh, the noodles, uh nibs uh, are from them. And uh, they come from India. And uh, have that in my pen, uh, the pen that I do with uh, Jim Hines, Hines pens, the Stars and Stripes. Uh, not only do I have Bach nibs, but I'm also dealing with Hiron from Magna Carta. I was one of Mag uh, Magna Carta's first US dealers. Thank you, you got it too. I now have titanium nibs, number six titanium nibs that Jim anodizes for me. Uh, anodizes, he uh, ceramic coats them. He keeps right. chiming me for that. It's they're not anodized, they are IP coated. It's an exclusive process that he uses. They're ceramic IP coated, uh, it's chip proof. So it is IP coating. I have them in titanium now. You can see them on the site. They are more, but I have IP uh, coated uh, ceramic steel Bach as well as titanium nibs uh, as well. Number six, titanium from Magna Carta. I'm also uh, always getting Magna Carta uh, pens, featuring them as well. Yeah, no, that's another great Indian pen. Marvelous, love them. Something else recently in, uh, we have Pilot's new, uh, three new uh, colors to the Iris Zuko line. Uh, I don't know the names off the hand, but I can tell you that they're lime green, they're pink, and they're a nice blue green color. I have them. They replaced a couple of the Iris Zuko old colors that were retired in a hoe. Shizuko, which was the dark brown, and another color, another blue that got replaced. I also have the Appetite Ink, which is Edelstein's Ink of the Year for 2022. It's called okay. Appetite, and it is a 
blue uh, precious stone, bluish green precious stone, appetite. Yeah. yeah, it's a real nice color. Yeah. That's going to be uh, available now. And that should make a nice pen hopefully later in the year. Uh, I have to eat some of my words about the Pelican Hub while I have you. Let me talk about that. Uh, I was told by Truck Pack earlier in the year, I was told by uh, uh, the sales manager, U.S. sales manager of Truck Pack, uh, Gary Lang, who uh, you know is my reps boss, that there was going to be a hub. He was told me that he was told to prepare for hub merchandise. He was told the Pelican Germany told Truck Pack to prepare to receive hub merchandise. There's no more talk about it, uh, I guess, because of the outbreak of more variants and all. I guess there was no talk about it. I've emailed Pelican directly. I've emailed people that run the hub because I run the Philly hub. I was telling people online on pen forums and all that that it's going to happen. And apparently I have to eat those words. So I want to publicly say, eating crow, that, uh, you know, I'm guilty that I was told there was going to be a Pelican hub, but apparently there's not. We would have known well by now. I would have already had the place on hand, I would have had all my people, I would have told Pelican how many kits to get prepared for. So again, we have another year with no hub. Um, hopefully it will continue, hopefully it will run next year. I was the Pelican hub master the last two years that it ran. I was a co-hub master prior to that. Uh, Pelican's perch, uh, Dr. Josh Stanley, who is a well-known Pelican expert collector, is part of our Philadelphia Pelican Hub group. He's part of the Philadelphia Pen Club crew, uh, well-known. He uh, ran it first. He, uh, you know, again, none of us have heard from the Hub. None of us have heard from Germany about it. So it's pretty much a done deal. It's not going to happen. It just keeps on and keeps on, doesn't stop. Yes, yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so when you have your table set up, what do you keep on the front and what do you keep on the back? Is that how you do yours? Yeah, I have five tables. I come in with tubs of merchandise. I have a lot of stuff, so I find it best to actually operate my ink and my paper out of my tubs. Some people find that uh, funny. They, first they walk by. Uh, I put my banners, uh, if I have... Wall tables, it's easier. Of course, I have the banners in the back and the end. But otherwise, if I have aisle tables, I usually take up a whole aisle and I put my banners in the end. And uh, they can see, they can pick from these tubs. I arrange them so they can see all the stuff in the tubs. And then in the middle, I usually put uh, my leather and my refills. And sometimes if I have my vintage, I'll put my vintage stuff out there. People forget that I started off selling vintage before I even dreamed about becoming a retailer. That's why I came up with this crazy idea that I could sell retail. Uh, I was going to my local pen events. I was going to the Philly pen show only with one table selling vintage. And um, I did that for a few years before I even thought about, you know, okay, I wasn't teaching full time anymore. I can do this. You know, I can, I can sell pens, you know, like I've told you, I've told people I, uh, have other hobbies and I've been selling basically since I was a teenager, I've been selling, you know, toys and stuff like that, vintage toys and all. And then I just came up with the idea, you know, I can do this. I can transition into being an actual legitimate dealer. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and then I have two to two and a half full tables of pens of new pens that I'm an authorized dealer of. Now, and, doing what you do, you have to believe in what you do. You have to want to do yeah. what you're doing because it, Take all your time up. You're exhausted. You're tired. But you know what? This is what you love. This is what your heart tells you to do. And you have, I'm sure you have a lot of fun doing it, don't you? We do. We have a lot of fun. Uh, it's all about seeing people. I'm still a hobbyist at heart. I, yeah. I, it's a business. I am in it to make money, but I still love seeing people. I still yeah. love talking about pens and sharing the hobby, hanging out with people, with fellow dealers after the show's over and, it, it is it is a family. You know, people really don't realize that we all get along. It's a brotherhood. You know, uh, you know, it's not cutthroat. I mean, we're all in competition with each other. Sometimes, again, I believe in bringing products that are unique and that helps me stand out. But in, at the end of the day, 
we are all in this together. We all eat and drink at the hotel bar at the end of the day. Um, we talk about the day. We talk about products. You know, this is how we all know what's going on. You know, uh, people are surprised. You know, I've talked about this before. I've talked about this before with you and I in events. We all know each other. We all buy from the same distributor. We all buy from the same reps. We all have a rep. One, a dealer does not have an independent rep. No one is big enough to have that. Yeah. You know, not even who you think is big enough to have that. We all deal with the same rep. We all know what somebody pays, what they're buying. We all know what's going on with other brands, with other dealers, with products. Um, so a lot of them are interested in knowing who I'm working with overseas, uh, you know, because they wind up approaching them about getting representation. I've actually helped some of my distributors. I've actually bought brands in for distributors. You know, if they see I'm doing well enough for the product, I tell them, hey, and that helps me. It helps me a lot. Uh, uh, I started dealing with Galen this year, you know, and, and that was a, a lesson for me, believe it or not. Uh, Galen is from Turkey. And I learned the hard way that the government of Turkey and the U.S. don't have a free trade agreement. And I paid customs fees for the first time. I've been bringing products in to the U.S. since Robert Oster, since Australia in 2016. I was only a business a year. I've never paid customs because even Australia has free trade agreement with the U.S. Apparently, Turkey does not and not get involved in politics and all that, you know, but that does add extra burden to me. I actually had to pay more. You know, I'm paying a maker's margin for Galen Leather. I am now paying customs tax on top of the shipping and all that. So my profit margin is very low. And this is why people that no one uh, budges on a Galen uh, case, you pay the full rate. You pay the same price you see online. Because honestly, we're only making about 10 to 20% profit on them by the time you're done between buying it, paying shipping, and paying that customs tax, and we're all paying it. Wow. Well, so then, you know, Galen, just a real nice guy, you know. I yeah, uh, Eunice is great. You know, I met him in D.C. last year. That's how we started making the establishment. Uh, he was in the room with me. He was in the small ballroom. They tried to make the small ballroom in D.C. the maker's room. I had been in that room the prior three, four years that we were at Falls Church. Uh, we were at the old hotel prior to that, the one in Tyson's Corner. Uh, that had been there for years. I had been going there just as a hobbyist. And in my first two years in business, we were there. And then we started coming to the Falls Church Marriott, which is a great hotel. They're, re they're redesigning it. So it would be interesting to see how that looks once it's done. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, I met Eunice, I met his family, uh, Galen Leather, it was good. I asked yep. to represent them, and yep. uh, we started making arrangements to carry it this year. Uh, I'll be buying uh, more merchandise from him when I see him next week. So yeah, yep. that'll help, buying directly from him in, in D.C., you know. Tell him I said hi when you see him. I will, I will. He's just a great guy, he really is. I just thank a lot of, of him. He's got great products, and this guy... It's amazing, you know. Yeah. So, you know, Frank does carry the pin case, right? That's the pin case that you carry. Oh yeah, I carry all, all the Galen products. Uh, I'm big on pen cases, so I carry the two, three, and five count flat case. Okay. I carry the six count and the twelve count magnetic case that everybody loves, and I carry the medic bag. Those are the ones that I have on hand. Okay. So that's a start right now. So sure. mm -hmm. we'll see what happens later. Yeah. I have a lot of leather. I have the big three in leather now. Like I said, I've been carrying Gary Logio uh, yeah, for yeah. About five years now. I yeah, carry D. Charles them. and I carry Galen. I carry a couple other uh, pen brand cases. I have uh, Laban. I have some cases from India that I started carrying. I, I carry a 10 count wrap case. It's actually really good quality. Um, 
I've been approached by Royce Leather about carrying their product. Possibly, I'm, I've got an evaluation of it and checking out with them. Uh, Royce is represented in a, a couple of department stores, so I'm looking at them, and I'm looking at other uh, brands as well. I'm always looking at brands. Brands are always approaching me, especially from India. I was interviewed uh, uh, by Inked Happiness, which is a popular pen blog in India. I'm a well-recognized dealer in India. Uh, I've bought a lot of Indian brands to the U.S. Uh, I was uh, interviewed by them. You can check out Inked Happiness. They're on Facebook. Uh, someone from India right now was uh, checking me out and asking me about carrying uh, one of their pens. It's an all-copper pen. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I asked for a copy. I asked for a sample. I pay for samples if I need to. And, you know, that's fine. So I'll evaluate it and let them know if I want to carry it or not. You know, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Okay. And there was another, let's see, you're carrying a, now who does the, uh, in India, the, uh, the president's pen? Is that Click or who? That's Click. Click. Yeah. That's, that's the president piston. That's the one that we were talking about. That's the piston. So yeah, really, really nice pen. Yeah. It, it's a $40 price point. It's a great bang for the buck. It's terrific. You've got one. Uh, I know Harsh yeah. sent them to you directly. Yeah. Uh, and they'll be going up for review. But yeah. You remind everybody that I'm carrying them. I have them. Yeah. Yeah. People are not going to wait. Yeah. You know, Frank's carrying them and they're all way affordable and they're all amazing right. pens, no matter what you get. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is if people are shy off because it's an Indian brand made pen. But yeah. you know, not to worry, their pens are really, really amazing and you will love their pens. You know, because Frank, you know, if I didn't like a pen, I would tell you. Sure. Great quality, great price point. I mean, this is 45 hours and the other ones are actually less and they write great. Great and nibs. And they look great. Yeah, really a good value for the money. Yes. Oh, yeah, I was ask you. A lot of the uh, nibs that I have, like I said, I have click nibs uh, available. I also have can write nibs that are actually in Yovo feeds. So I do have loose Yovo and Bach units to sell. I have them in gold. I have them in steel. Uh, all someone has to do is ask me. They're on the site, but they... I carry a lot more things that are on my site. Uh, it's not easy being a one-man show. Uh, I am the webmaster. I am the complaint department. I am the salesman. I am the fulfillment manager. I'm the stockist. Uh, our spare bedroom is my warehouse. Uh, you know, I carry a lot of merchandise, like I said. Uh, I have six-figure stock on hand. I pay a lot of insurance to hold that. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm with the Hartford group. I'm with a big, well-known commercial insurance company and, and I pay a lot of insurance, but I don't have a physical store, obviously. So, you know, I pay a couple grand a year just on business insurance before I even get into my medical and car and all that. But, uh, but that's because, you know, they, they treat me as a traveling salesman. Uh, my stuff is constantly in, in, in transit as far as they're concerned. I have a separate rider on top of my homeowner's insurance to protect the merchandise. I'm paying my business insurance and I'm paying a rider to cover my stuff if anything happens to it on top of my homeowners. So uh, yeah, well insured. I, I have the merchandise. People just don't realize what dealers go through to, to come to a show and set things up. A lot of dealers have moved on from pen shows. You know, a lot of dealers don't come to pen shows anymore. A lot of them only come to their home show. I, I'm not that way. I love pen shows. I am a hobbyist at heart. I will always go to pen yeah. shows. As long as I'm able to get around, I will go to pen shows. I'm in my mid-50s. I see myself doing this when I'm in my mid-70s. You know? Now you do carry euchres? Euchres? Yeah, I love euchres. Euchres the felt tip pen? Yep. Yeah. It's from Yaffa. It's a great point. It comes in 0 0.8. It comes in 1.0, which is like the medium. It comes in 1.2, 1.4. It's a Eucharist felt tip pen. They have them for as little as $12, the basic yep. one. It moves up to an all metal one. Yep. And it has one that's, 
yeah. also uh, fine uh, acrylic acrylic that are eighty dollars price point. Again, really a nice pens. Yep. And now, because uh, I I speak with Loretta once a week, uh, and uh, she sent me already a. Uh, uh, two of the new Fisher ballpoint pens. Well, they're, uh, they're like they're like the uh, uh, space pen. I'm sorry, they're like the space pen that they've come out with. So okay. The review on those that can be interesting. Okay. Uh, like upside down and just like the space pen does. I guess they call it what the uh, what was the name of that pen that they call it? Space pen or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. The Fisher space pen. Huh. It's a competitor to the Fisher Space Pen. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Okay. That would be a lot of fun to do. So. Nice. Yeah. Always interested in hearing about new products. Yeah. You know, I, I love following you. Uh, I, 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 we talked about this. You know, uh, I try to keep up with you and keep up track with your, uh, with your, uh, your Zoom yeah. sessions and your meetings. You know, it's been a while since I've been on one. It's just I've been incredibly busy this year. I'm really happy. You know, like I said, I'm going, getting back to pen shows. I'm going to 13 pen shows this year. I usually go to 11 or 12. I actually added, added the Orlando show. I do all nine shows on the East Coast. Half of our pen shows in the U.S. are East Coast. I'm like the king of the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. I'm fully based. I go to Boston and Miami. I go to all nine of those shows this year. And I go to another four shows in the middle of the country. I do Detroit. I do uh, Columbus, Ohio. I do St. Louis. And I do Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried because I know you're busy, exhausted. And you know, when you have <laughs> combination to, of all the above, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go to nobody's show. I'm staying home, do nothing. Hey, okay. So, and, and that's cool because I know we're going to hook up sooner or later anyway. If I ever come to the Dallas show, I hope to see you. <laughs> yes. And then with me, you know, it's either you busy or exhausted. It's me with my health. You know how it goes. It's my health. So uh, we're kind of in the same uh, boat there. So. But we, we do get together. Yes, yes. That's that's the fun part. And uh, you look the same. Thank you. I feel good. You look great. I know you've been through a lot. I know <laughs> I don't wish that on anybody. I'm uh, I'm glad you, you're strong. You stay strong. You, you know, this is what keeps me going, what I do. I, I love what I do. You know, it's, it's part of me now. You know, when you do it, you do it. It's just you, like you grow another arm. Yeah. Right. Right. But, you know, on your euchres, those are some really neat and really, really neat pen. And they also have the inks out and the cartridges for it. Uh, so I hope people start trying them. Have you been selling many of the euchres? The euchres? Oh, yeah. Euchres does very well. People, uh, I started with rollerballs. I've been collecting pens more or less my entire life. Uh, our dad was always in the ballpoints and running roller balls when they came popular. Yeah. And I've always had a decent pen in my life. And then when I became a teacher, uh, I used to get Farney's catalogs uh, in my college days 30 years ago. I used to get the Farney's catalogs and Fountain Pen Hospital. I, I would just shy away from fountain pens because I didn't really have a good mentor for that. And I would buy fancy ballpoints and roller balls and I'd just be like, eh, you know. Fountain pens who needs them, you know, <laughs> truth be told. And then I became a teacher and I had a good mentor. I had a, a principal that was in the fountain pens. We, we hit it off because uh, he came into the school. I was already there. He's, he, he, he had a session to meet everybody and he's writing with uh, Alami All-Star. And we hit it right off. He's like, you know what this is? He goes, great. He goes, oh, you have pens. He goes, well, here, take this home, play with it. He goes, you don't like fountain pens? I'll fix that. And then, that, and then that, that's how that took off. And then for 20 years now, I've, you know, I'm a complete convert. I love fountain pens. Uh, you know, I always had a feeling that I would be self-employed doing something eventually, but I really didn't think I'd be selling pens. And here I am, you know, seven years later, I've actually been selling pens actively for about 12 years. I've been selling as a retailer for seven. Like I said, I started. In a long way. Yeah, I have, you know, I, I used to shoot video. I went to school for communications for radio, TV, and film. Uh, I did a history minor. I did a English minor. So I, I did business communications. It's one of the reasons why I was able to teach history in English early on. 
and then I got into IT later and I still, you know, I, I teach, I teach an adjunct class. I teach one or two nights. Uh, you know, I do that. I tutor from time to time, but I am all in. I am 99% a store owner going to pen shows and maybe the other 1% doing the other things, you know, so yeah. uh, this is full time. I count on this. Uh, I count on pen shows. I count on customers at, at the site, you know, uh, most of what I do is at shows. I count heavily on pen shows. I definitely see an influx on the site after pen shows. You know, we people that come to pen shows count on our pen shows. We we need them. Uh, I think they'll always be around, no matter uh, what happens with our economy. I think we will have pen shows, and we need you to come to them. We need you to support them. Yeah, you know, people that buy pens. A lot of us just buy pens because we love buying pens. It's uh, what we do, you know. Uh, I've got drawers full of them, cases full of. I I like pens, uh, and you know, do I ever say I'm not buying no more? Nah. Same with inks. I'm not buying no more ink. Look at that ink! Oh my god! That ink wall behind you. <laughs> I got some over there too, and some over there. <laughs> But I keep on, keep on, keep on. And all these new inks that keep coming out. There's one, uh, oh, what's the name of that brand? Uh, not Fiber Reserve, the other one. Uh, not Fiber Castell. Is it Waterman? Well, there's Andorillium from Florida. I huh. represent them. Uh, I actually did send you samples on that. The yeah. new, yeah. That was a mom and pop. Uh, I met them last year. I met them at the Chicago show last year. They are in Minnesota and in Florida. It's a mother and son and daughter team. It's family run business. And William Inks, uh, natural ingredients, all made here in the U.S. Bottle and everything. It's a nice glass bottle. Uh, great colors. Nice, basic, uh, good uh, variation in color. No glistening, none of that fancy stuff. Just good variation. Right, right, Solid right. colors. They're named after octopi and birds. So aviary and octopi. Uh, good colors. I represent them. I've been carrying them for over a year now. I did send you a complete sample of them. Well, let me tell uh, you what happened. We've already did a review on that and yeah. many others we spoke of. But when uh, Mr. Nasser went to download it to, to do his magic, uh, the chip was bad. We spent hours doing these videos. You know, it takes a long time. Hours. We did, what, four or five videos? Yeah. Sure. All gone. So now we got to redo everything again. And these, like even the others that sent, they've been waiting for some time. Where's my review? Uh, well, it's uh, gone. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's not even a video. I can tell. I know. I mean, I'm... I'm a videographer from the 90s. When, when I got out of school, I, I didn't want to teach, even though I had credentials to do that. I went to school for RTF. I, I, I worked in banking. I worked in things. And then I shot video as, an, uh, as, a, for, as a hobbyist on the side. I did weddings and parties and stuff like that in the 90s. And that was back in the old days when you had to take the video film and then, you know, have that equipment and, and do it real to real, you know, uh, on actual hardware equipment, you know. And people were like, oh, you know video? I'm like, yeah. They're like, why don't you have a great YouTube channel? I, I don't want to be bothered. I don't have the time for that. You know, when I finally decided to become a teacher, I, I put all that aside. You know, I, I finally got rid of that equipment maybe about 10 years ago, and I still had it. You know, it was collecting dust, you know. And uh, I mean, I, I, I've i started to run my channel a little bit. I do a couple things, but you're the man, Larry. I'm not competing against you with that. I'm no, no, no. here with you with that. But I do know the basics and mechanics of video. I am... I'm a jack of all trades. I've had a lot of interesting uh, work. I've done a lot of different careers. I've, uh, I've sold mortgages. I've done banking. I've done credit counseling. I teach IT, uh, you know, still. I used to teach full-time history and English. Uh, I've sold something at hobby shows or trade shows. I've always done something on the side. I've made the gig uh, hob economy working before now became the norm and look at me now now i'm selling pens full time you know it's it's a lot of fun I, i've always been the kind of person on the go 
uh, I, I've, I don't like standing still. <laughs> I like doing something. And I, I've, I found something now, you know, that I've always liked it and now I love it. And it's been a part of my life the past 20 years. And, and the past seven or eight, I've made a business out of it. And that's what I'm doing full time. For us to improve the quality of our video, it takes money because oh, yeah. it's software. You know, what the software we have, we're limited on what we can do with our video. Yeah, if we looked at others, woo, you're talking about big bucks. I mean, you know, the way I like them. We're fine, like old school, just like we are. Get the message out, show the product, we're good to go. Yep. So now we've got to ask people to check you out at the pink show. So, in fact, how do you, you direct the people to your website? I do a lot of marketing. Uh, obviously, yeah. I do uh, marketing uh, on social media. I uh, do a lot of advertising. I, uh, I'm always pushing things on social media, pushing things at shows, uh, word of mouth. Yeah. You coming on with you and things like that, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm always out there doing what I can. Yep. I'll advertise in Pen World from time to time. I've done that in the past. Uh, they're always trying to get uh, me to come back and, and advertise frequently. Uh, Pen World's a great magazine. You know, I advertise in uh, Paul Arano's Fountain Pen Journal, even though it's mainly about vintage again, because I started with vintage. I have, I have vintage pens to sell. I have parts. I don't do a lot of that on the site. Uh, I tend to buy a, a lot of things through auctions and all that uh, at pen shows, on sites, auction sites, things like that. I, I love pens. I'm writing with a vintage SD right now, which is actually a prototype that I got at a pen show auction. Uh, the reason why it's a prototype, you'll see it has, it's a J and it has no trim on it save the clip at the top okay. so it was a it was a, a one of those one of pens so you see it it has an end jewel but it has no uh ring around it on there and also it, it was a prototype pen and i'm writing with that and i i tend to keep a lot of the vintage that i buy uh i have a lot of parts people just need to ask me when when i go to shows i have a vintage area. I have parts and all. Uh, a lot of vintage people at shows will come to me and buy things. It's one of the reasons why I don't advertise because I have a base and a lot of people that you know that deal with vintage come to me and they buy off me. So I don't have to advertise that as much. Uh, I know it sounds funny, but you know, I'm well known. I'm big at pen shows. I'm usually, like I said, I'm the biggest draw. I'm, I'm the guy usually that has the most tables other than distributors you know uh, as far as dealers go most dealers don't come with five or six tables sometimes i do six tables i definitely do five now i've done as much as six uh i have the biggest uh, amount of merchandise at a show and i have a, a good base on a lot of things i have um like i said i have i have my own vintage following and i don't have to advertise as much for that people know i'm the guy to come to for spare parts for loose nibs, you know, I'm, I've am i done very well. Uh, obviously I wanna grow, wanna grow more, but uh, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished in this amount of time being a one man pen store, you know, and it's not easy. Hopefully I got to see you grow. <laughs> yep. uh, my brother is a, is a tremendous help, my whole family is. It's all hands on in DC. My wife is coming, it'll be all four hey. of us. We need we need four people to man five tables in DC. So is a, on a Saturday is a nonstop conveyor belt of customers. And I'm hoping that is true this year. Okay, so anyway, they can go to your website and. Uh, all right, so yeah, uh, DC show. Uh, all of us, it's a hands on, all hands on deck. It'll be my wife, it'll be my brother, my father. So it'll be all four of us. Uh, DC is usually a conveyor belt on a Saturday of nonstop people coming forth. So I'm hoping that continues this year. Now, uh, are they going to require a mask when they go? Do you know? 
As far as I know, mask, I think, will be encouraged in D.C. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we will mask up. So, yeah, it'll be definitely be a good yeah, idea. There, there are some people that don't take cash, just cards. Is that still true everywhere? It just depends on the person. I think it depends on, on the dealer. I take all that. I take cash. I yeah. take cards. I, I won't refuse cash. Uh, I take cards. I take cash. Uh, I take Venmo. I take PayPal. Yeah. Whatever. All good. Sure. Right here. Here's my little card. There you go. Thank you. Next. <laughs> oh, okay. Your newest inks that you have, Gord, one more time. The newest ones you have. Newest inks are Sailor. Yep. Uh, and Aurelium. Yeah, that's the one that I ordered that, that, that screwed up on the uh, video. Yeah. Definitely. And Aurelium is a great brand. Uh, I like them. Yeah. Working on getting the reviews for them. It'd be good. I uh, just started carrying Coloring, Galen, Sailor. Really proud of all that. Uh, I still have a great supply of Tomoe River. I'm showing the small pad right now. I have all of them. I have the large A4. I have the A5. I have the A6 and the A7. In the A4s, I have the pads. In the A5, I have journals and pads. In the A6 and A7, the smaller ones, I have the journals. I have at least two sources right now for these. I have personally cleaned out one of my three. Uh, me and another dealer are still buying uh, Tamale River. Sake, technical paper. Uh, I have bought the remaining uh, quantities of these that they had. And I have a good supply of them. They sell very well, it shows. As long as I can keep buying the original 52 GSM, I'll keep buying it. In 68 GSM, I have both Endless and I have Odyssey. I just started carrying Odyssey as well in, in the past year. Odyssey notes, uh, notebooks, uh, people love Odyssey. I have them in the 68 GSM. I'm always adding brands. You know, I'm actually forgetting the brands that I've added. You know, I've added at least five brands this year already, and we're still adding. I have, uh, uh, I'm finalizing uh, Leonardo. I'm going to be carrying Leonardo pens before the yeah, year's yeah. out. <clears throat> and then um, other brands, you know, I'm, I'm constantly growing. So always looking to add new brands always looking to add things. You know, I go to a lot of shows and I'm not afraid to bring the merchandise. Uh, are you carrying yet? Uh, I get, are they pin holders, pin stands? What do you call them? If, if I have pen stands, that's for me to show the merchandise. Yeah, I don't really bring that stuff to sell. No, no. If I have stands, it's the, it's the, the show off the merchandise, you know? you know? You put the pin there or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that. The Godzilla, yeah, that's great. Yeah, Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the brands that I have will, will say the brand that they're from, you know? I, we get these. As dealers, we get this stuff for free, you know? We get them like to show them off. The whole idea is to have them and show them off. You carry Ferris school pins? School pens? No, Ferris. I think it's Ferris. Oh, wheel. Ferris wheel. No, I don't carry Ferris wheel. No, I don't. Nice little pin. Is it? Uh, I've been approached by them. Uh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't uh, decided yet, but yeah. But it's a good brand. It's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, Galen from Galen Leathers, uh, he carries some of his own line pins. Some were made in Turkey, he told me. Right. And there's one that was made in Canada, maybe? Okay. So, and they all write really nice. I've done videos nice. on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I plan to get more involved with Galen than the ones I already carry. I carry Scrix pens. I know you've uh, evaluated that and you've checked that out. Scrix pens from Turkey. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is actually distributed uh, here in the U.S. through uh, a vendor. And uh, I have them. They're great. Uh, they are a piston fill pen. For forty dollars again, great price point, great writer. Yeah, I mean, you might see the pen say, eh, "I like it." Now you had that white little pen, remember? Long time ago, was it last year? I did that review on that white little pen. Uh, oh, what was it called? It has an ink window piston filler. Yeah, I think that's it. The Scrix pen from Germany, uh, yeah. from Turkey, rather. I'm sorry. 
Pen from Turkey. Uh, the Scrix 409. It's a pen from Turkey. Yep, yep. That's a nice yep. little pen. That's the one, exactly. That's yep. A nice little pen. Scrix. So yep. white people, buy one, you'll see. Yep. yep. It's called the Scrix 409. Yep. It looks like a well known German pen, which yep. is why I slipped yep. it said Germany. It looks like a well known German pen. Uh, and for the price point, you can't beat it. See, there's so many underdogs that we've talked about that people don't even know or realize how good these pins are. You know, yeah. they're probably saying, well, you know, $30, $40 for a pin. God, how cheap is that? Is it going to work? Yeah. Don't yeah. don't count them out. You know, there's a lot of great pens out yeah. there for under $100, even under $50. Yeah. There, yeah. Are. Yeah. there are. So all they, all they have to do is try it, and uh, they're going to be amazed. Is it, what? I better get another one. Like I already have. Oh, before I forget, back to Lummi for a minute here. That yeah. the uh, oh, what's the name of that newest one that came out? The propeller. Uh, remember the CC pen? Yeah, could be. It, it's a it's a uh, metal pen. Uh, oh oh yes, the one that's three sided. Yes yes, yeah. very good. Actually, the pen is really good, uh, good seller, uh, great ergonomic design. Uh, the main thing about that, the shtick about it is you can only close it one way because the whole pen from end to end is shaped that way. The, uh, the grip, the section is metal and it's shaped that way. And you have to close the cap the same way. So okay. people find that a little tedious because they have to aim it to close it right. But, you know, that's that's just being picky. It's, it's, it's a great pen. It's a great writer. Lamy always does something cutting edge, you know, right from the fiberglass 2000 on, you know, uh, the 2000 pen is as old as me. It's 55 years design. You know, it's a fiberglass Macleron pen. Right, it's right. Timeless design. You know, Lamy has always done something uh, cutting edge, always, no matter what they've introduced, you know. Well, that's another nice pen. Yeah, now yeah. be looking at that. Now, what nip sizes do they come in? Whatever, fine. Long as come, uh, most part, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and 1.1 stub in their most basic pens. Uh, the uh, gold nibs uh, models tend to come extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, they also have something that they call Joy Calligraphy, which comes uh, larger. 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 and 1.9. Getting big up there, okay. It's modeled after the Safari pen, the, the uh, ABS plastic, but it is a desk pen and it's called the Joy. And one, another thing, while it's on my mind, how is that rainbow pen doing? That one took off like rocket, didn't it? Rainbow pens have become pretty popular. A lot of brands are doing it now. Yeah, there, there's... Um, Multicolor pens, what they do is they do a rainbow with the metal. Conklin has it now. Yeah. LeBan has it. Uh, uh, I have it. Diplomat I have it. has it. Yeah, there's so many brands now. Uh, Caveco has it, Fire Blue. They actually uh, fire blue their Supra pen and their Lily Putt pen. Uh, Pinniter just came out with a rainbow multicolored pen in their Arco series, uh, high end uh, celluloid pen. You know, there's just different types now. The rainbow pen is pretty popular. Uh, Monty Grappa had uh, a rainbow pen too uh, years back. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Wow. Okay. So anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, DC show, getting ready to go to that. We'll, we'll be leaving on that on Thursday. It's a local show for me. So three hour drive down to DC. Uh, I used to do that all the time, even before. I started selling pens. It's a local show to me. Um, definitely get to it. So where are you going to be at? Show. The location? I'm going to be in the uh, main ballroom, the, the uh, one on the first floor, uh, the larger ballroom, the smaller ballroom, which I, which you first walk in to the left that I've been in in years past. It's closed off for construction. Uh, a lot of the front lobby is uh, walled off for construction. It's one of the reasons why, like I said, the show promoters want you to buy tickets in advance. You won't be turned away. It's just going to be harder to have a line at this hotel now, given the limited space that they have. So they prefer that you have tickets in advance and you just, so you can just walk right in. So I'll be in the main ballroom. 
uh, there in one of the aisles. Uh, I won't have a wall table uh, as I had in the smaller ballroom this year because of space and all. But I'm glad to be on the first floor in the main ballroom. There will be people in the hallway in the main ballroom as before. And I believe that they're also going to be on the second floor this year too. Uh, in the mezzanine or second floor, there's going to be a room there for, for dealers as well. Now, by chance, are you carrying, what is in that tent over there? Is that a tornado? Hey. Retro 51? Yep. I also carry, started carrying Retro 51 pens last year. Great brand, well liked. Uh, I have uh, a lot of the latest pens from them. They just actually came out with a Smithsonian series, Panda Pen. I have that. It's a newest series. There's pandas on this pen for the National Zoo from the Smithsonian. Yeah, yeah. yeah really nice. Uh, there, uh, I always have P51. I always have the Corsair the Navy pen. I have the P47 Thunderbolt. I have the U.S. Postage Stamps, the Love Stamp, and the Jeep pen, uh, the U.S. Postal. Uh, I have a lot of the other well-liked uh, series from them. So yeah, Retro 51, I like tornado pens. I've been collecting them myself for years and I was glad that uh, the new ownership approached me last year once they took over, once they knew they weren't. Uh, once the new manager took over and Retro 51 was saved. So the new manager approached me last summer in DC. Uh, I consider DC my anniversary show. I started off as a dealer there. So like I said, um, going into my sixth show in my seventh year, uh, starting my eighth year actually at the uh, DC show. I always consider that the kickoff to my uh, next year, the DC show, because I started there. And uh, yeah, it should be great. So they approached me, the new management, said that we're going to, we're, we're the ones that are going to buy the Retro 51. We want to start having online dealers now. Because in the past, they wanted only physical in-store brick and mortar uh, Retro 51 dealers. That was yeah. the old. What time did the doors open? Uh, on Friday, it is a weekend trade holder only weekend pass. So I think it opens at noon. So it's noon to five on Friday. So it is a, uh, a smaller show on Friday. Saturday and Sunday are the big shows. They're the public days. It's going on, I believe, Thursday through Sunday. So uh, there's a pre-event, I think, on Thursday, mainly vendors only. Friday is going to be the weekend pass holders only, which means people can go all three days. And then Saturday and Sunday is the public show for each day. So do y'all get any breaks at all? You just have to keep on going. Uh, no, we pretty much keep on going. As long as people come, we keep on going. Uh, it's a good show. It's well run. Uh, the Johnsons still run the show. It's the people, the, the original uh, person that ran it passed away, but his sister and her son, his nephew are now running it. They've helped him in the past. So it should be a pretty seamless event. So they've helped him run it in the past. So we're looking forward to a, a good show. What time do you close at night or evening? I think it's five o'clock on Friday and Saturday, and it's four on Sunday. So Eastern time, of course. Leave, do they leave promptly? You have to wait till they get out. Uh, it's pretty much wait till you get out. Yeah, it's not one of them shows that throws you out and all that. No, it's it's good. Uh, we keep selling until it's over. Yep. And yeah, so I guess you're pretty exhausted. Yeah, but uh, you know you love it. It's what you do. Yeah. You love to see people. Like I said, I I go a lot of times just to still see people. I'm still at a hobbyist mindset. I'm there to make money, obviously, but I still am a hobbyist at heart. And I I, I, I love seeing people, love seeing uh, pen pals. And, you know, speaking of pen pals, you know, we have discount codes. I just celebrated my seventh anniversary. The site had an anniversary discount. You know, sign up, like my page, like my pages online. You will always get discount code information. Larry is still there. Larry's a discount code. You've got so many awesome pen discount pals. Code. Larry, just like they never end. So, you know. Yeah, I'm always offering something over and above the standard discounts on the site. Uh, you know, uh, much to the chagrin of my dealers, uh, of my distributors. Uh, uh, a lot of distributors, we have a, our set rate that all dealers have to abide by, no matter who they are. 
we all are allowed to discount 10%, 20% or nothing at all. We don't have to abide by that. We don't have a license to abide by that. No matter how big the dealer is, we all have the same. Like I said, we all sign the same agreement. We all have the same rep. We all sign the same contract. So we know who's buying what, what allotment they're getting, a special edition, et cetera, you know, uh, on the food chain, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, let's go back. I, I'm, I'm probably keeping you, but tell me when no, you're ready. You're not at all. Vanishing point. You carry the decimal still? I carry decimo. I carry the VP. Uh, I paused because I was just getting ready to divulge something I shouldn't. Speaking of vanishing point, I know the color of the 2022 vanishing point color. And I was actually just on tip of my tongue. And I'm like, nope, don't talk about allotment. Don't talk about that. That hasn't been made official yet. Don't talk about the color, Frank. <laughs> so that that saved me. Uh, I did the pilot factory tour uh, again this year. I did it last year. I did it again this year. Me and my wife, Nadine, did it this year. Uh, we actually vacationed in St. Augustine. I'm actually going to Florida three times this year. I went in January on vacation. Uh, we just came back from Miami last show earlier this month. And now we're going to uh, Orlando in September at the inaugural Orlando Penn Show, which should be great. That show, the vendor tables have already sold out. He sold out well ahead. First show should be great. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, as far as I know, again, I will be the biggest uh, dealer there and looking forward to this show. And uh, last thing is, is DD going? DD actually gets boarded uh, at an event like this where we all go. Uh, normally Nadine stays home with her uh, at my local shows. Dee Dee comes to Philly because it's a home show. We all go home at night. In both Baltimore and D.C., uh, Nadine comes. It's a, We consider this a local show. Uh, we're, we're only 90 miles from Baltimore. We're 150 miles from D.C. Dee Dee gets boarded. So it's, it's fun. She has fun. She goes to a boarding place that we know and trust. And they take good care of her. And it's it's good. So do you have any certain pins that are going to be on the spotlight when you go? Are they all just? I pretty much uh, spotlight everything. You know, I, yeah, I, I don't have one brand. Uh, I love all pens. You know, I, I love pens. That's me. I don't, I don't count on one brand. For my success, yeah, I don't count on one distributor for my success. I count on all of them to support me and be there for me. And at shows, they are. Uh, I am their go-to dealer for a lot of my distributors. They know that. They know I represent the brands well. I bring the product to shows. A, a lot of my uh, brands are very grateful that I do that. I bring ink, you know, Colorverse. Colorverse Inks, for example, Colorverse is well liked. Colorverse is a very uh, bulky brand. That's the best the term to use for that. You know, you have the Colorverse Ink sets so that two and one in a box. A lot of dealers don't like bringing that. I bring three crates of Colorverse Ink. I have a crate just for the multi pack, I have crates for the minis, the little five milliliter sample minis, and I have one for their regular. 15 and 30 milliliter. I bring that many colors and LBA luxury brands is very grateful that I do that. And most dealers are not willing to do that because it's bulk. You know, there's a lot of dealers will fly and they won't bring everything. And that's why, why doesn't Frank go to West Coast pen shows? Frank doesn't want to drive five or six days out to do that. Frank does not. Frank does not need to go to it. Frank did go to San Francisco one year. Frank had a blast. Frank only bought pens to that. I see myself doing that again. Uh, this year, I don't need to do that. Uh, but I will go back to it. San Fran was a great show. I had a great time. Met a lot of pen pals West Coast that I've known on forums for years that I didn't really meet in person before. That was a lot of fun. We did that. That's well documented on pen forums and online that Mark and I took a train and I had my cargo with me. 
we took the train. Uh, a lot of people laughed at that, but we had a lot of fun. People are now doing it. Some people are actually doing that. They're like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Uh, it is. If you have the time for three days to go out uh, on a train and do that, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I go to shows that I can drive to either one day or two day. This is DC's a local show to us. We leave so Thursday night. Weekend, we're right? there. We're home Sunday night after the show's over. Yeah. Okay, you leave what Friday night? No, you leave Thursday. Uh, Thursday night. This Thursday. Yep, it's this weekend. This weekend coming up. Yep, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Yep, Falls Church Marriott, uh, DCPenshow.com. Yep. So hopefully you'll break somewhere and rest a little bit, have something to eat, and then move on. No. Yeah, that's pretty much a nonstop run because it's only three hours. It's pretty good. Yeah, we make a couple. We make a couple of rest stops. You know. Or a quick break to go to the bathroom, et cetera. But other than that, no, it's not a it's not a show we have to rest and all that. We just get down there, we'll eat down there, we'll eat down there Sunday. We're we're good. We'll be home at a decent time Sunday. So yeah, yeah. it'll be good. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Anything you want right. to say before you go? I really appreciate uh you doing this. I appreciate uh your time. I appreciate you and Mr. Announcer's time doing this and helping helping me uh get the word out about me and the products and stuff like that. As soon as we hang up, we're going to start working on it. Okay. okay. Sounds okay. terrific. All right, my friend. If you need me, give me a holler. I'm Thank here. you, my friend. Always. Love you guys. Bye -bye. Thank you.